โอเคไปอ่านนะฉันฮัลโหลทุกคนและสวัสดีที่ฟิลิปปินโอฟรีทิงเกอร์สพอดแคสต์ที่เป็นภาพยนตร์และวิดีโอฉันคือเรดฉันคือมาร์ตันสันและวันนี้เราจะพูดเกี่ยวกับสิ่งที่เป็นสิ่งที่มีความสำคัญและไม่ทุกคนรู้จักแต่ไม่มีคนรู้จักเลยล่าสุดรัฐบาลฟิลิปปินส์ถูกตัดสินใจในเรื่องของความเป็นธรรมของการใช้ข้อมูลที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการใช้ข้อมูลที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการใช้ข้อมูลที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการใช้ข้อมูลที่เกี่ยวข้อง They they struck down certain provisions, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to demystify and answer the common questions about the cybercrime law and how it affects us. What should we do about it? So let's start with what actually happened. So what what are the things that the Supreme Court uh, struck down? Yeah, um, it upheld a bit the cyber libel provisions. What it struck down was the provision that. Would make cyber libel uh, apply to um, reposting, retweet, tweeting. Mm. So the the common concerns that just by sharing or retweeting, you could become a, an accomplice to e libel. Yes. Those were struck down. Yes, but uh, as as pointed out in the um, concurring and dissenting opinion of um, Justice uh, Marvik Lyonen, he said that um, it's not that clear. Hmm. Because um, you can actually retweet, tweet, or um, repost something, and you would just put an innocuous uh, statement like this. Then, in effect, you're actually restating the whole thing. Hmm. So um, there has to be context that you have to apply. And yeah. if 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 you're a if you're a lawyer and um, you have a client that says this guy. Um, Uh, is libeling me. You just don't say, "Oh, we can't use that because um he didn't use enough words." If 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 I'm the lawyer for the guy who wants me to file a libel suit, I'd look for context. I would look at the whole in, the entire mm. online conversation. Yeah. So I wouldn't just tell him, "Forget about it. The uh, cyber crime law wouldn't um apply." So it's still ambiguous. Like we we yes. thought that this would be clarified by the Supreme Court, but it turns out that the fears of of the you know the law being at the hands of whatever judge has your case. Like yes. if the judge is more for freedom of expression and against libel, then they would side with uh with you. Yes. But if if he's in, he he happens to be in a bad mood, <laughs> then he'll uh -huh. be against you. And this this raises the same concerns of it being a sleeper clause. Like if the president happens to become someone who's not for freedom of expression, yes. then the the freedoms of expression aren't guaranteed. So yes. the problem is still there, in your opinion. Yes. Um. Actually, um. I have to clarify that. Um. Since I'm a uh, petitioner, I'm still under the subjudice rule because we're, oh, yeah. we're yes we're still filing. But I can safely say that um we are going to um cite the dissenting opinion of. Justice Leonin. Yes, and that's precisely what we what what I, we are, we just talked about. Um, he said that um, the nuance is not that clear. So, so you have to look for the context, and that's something that the majority opinion um, did not get. Yes, yes. So we are both members of the Philippine Internet Freedom Alliance. You're welcome to join us, by the way, at PIFA. dot ph, please, and uh, just to be updated on all the developments. And there's a. We are going to do some things like a motion for reconsideration. Those are the things that we'll do. We'll continue to raise awareness about this issue. And so far, like the the issue that still sticks out for us is the e libel. Like, and we'll get back to this in a bit before we, uh, before we end this this podcast. But let's talk about the other provisions that that were once concerned. So so the the provisions on monitoring. You know the ah, data yes. and what, um, what about those cyber surveillance? Um, we're actually glad that um, Section 12 on uh, real-time collection of uh, traffic data was um, struck down. Hmm. And as for um, the takedown clause, yes, okay. that one is also a big one. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 then um, even the Solicitor General uh, gave that up from the very beginning. Yes. He yes. said we're not defending it because. We too believe it's wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that was uh, yeah. one thing yes. even before the de um, decision came. Yeah. yeah. In in that sense, we were already partida. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, um, the problem there is that um, in Section 12, that's uh, the real-time collection of uh, traffic data, that's only one part of a slew of provisions on cyber surveillance. We have 13, we have 14, and I think even 15. Um, I can't recall exactly which ones these are, but um, these are the ones that uh, deal with um, the preservation of data. Yeah. Okay. The problem there is that you're going to force third parties, meaning um, your uh, the uh, the ISPs, okay, the internet service providers. You're going to force them to work for the government. Yes. Okay. So um, the difficulty with this is that if you're an ISP, you're a third party. You wouldn't want your business to be bothered. Yeah. So if the government wants something, and I have to depend on the government to um, allow me to work with the franchise, then I'm going to give it to them. So if, if they say, okay, um, can you keep uh, your, uh, your, your data or um, the stuff is getting posted for more than two months, the real businessman would say, of course, yes, because you could pull the plug on me at any time. Mm -hmm. So that's the danger. Uh, Section 12 is an obvious, uh, it's a no-brainer. Uh, being able to um, look into uh, traffic data, that's snooping. Yes. Okay? The problem with the other sections, it's a form of snooping. No, well, not really form of snooping. It helps snooping by yeah. the government. Yeah. And we have to remember that um, with, this, uh, with the revelations of Snowden, well, I guess we're going to include this in the motion for recon. Um, Snowden revealed last year that uh, there's the Five Eyes um, surveillance uh, network, wherein you have um, the US, Canada, UK, Australia, and New Zealand forming the Five Eyes uh, network. Yeah. And the problem there is that even if our um, national security agency would say, oh, we we're not yet using the law. We're, we're not. We, we don't. We're not um, snooping on anyone yet. Yet. Yeah, but the problem there is that you already have these um, other countries we're really doing it for them. Because mm. um, we have to remember that that's the reason why um, in Germany, Angela Merkel was so angry because she found out. Um, Angela Merkel is the head of Germany. She found out that she was being spied upon by the U.S. So, um, Angela Merkel, um, Brazil, um, so that's Germany and Brazil, they uh, helped form last year um, the UN resolution on uh, the right to privacy in the digital age. It was specifically created as a reaction to the Five Eyes net, uh, Network. Yeah. And our problem there is that... Um, According to one of the Snowden leaks, uh, one of the more active um, embassies in, this, uh, in the, the Five Eyes Network is the Australian embassy here in Manila. So what you are saying is that there are already signs of the mm -hmm. Five Eyes Network here in the Philippines and it's in the, uh, the Australian embassy here. Yes. So, you know, when, when SOPA, when PIPA, when it became an issue, that's around the time that the cybercrime yes. law also kind of became an issue here. Mm -hmm. And the fears have been that we are headed in that direction. Yes. Do you think that we are? Yes, um, definitely. Uh, the problem there is that um, these uh, Five Eyes net, uh, nations in the Five Eyes Network are already doing... Um, the snooping uh, business for their allies. Yeah. Okay. And does that include us? Yes. So, okay. So, so what happens is um, they're already snooping uh, on uh, Filipinos, and the Philippine government is free to ask for their help. Mm. So it's kind of a disingenuous thing when the Philippine government is saying we're not snooping on you. Yes. Our our I friends are. are. Yes, our precisely. friends are. And even if they don't get the rights to do it themselves, practically we're already not as private as we all think we are. Yes. The surveillance state is really now. 
So it's already happening now. Yes. So let's talk about another very controversial provision, mm. cyber pornography or yes. cyber sex. Actually, um, that's my uh, pet peeve. Um, people usually confuse the two. Yes. Okay. Uh, during the oral arguments, uh, the Solicitor General, um, Francis Hardelesa, stated that um, actually the cyber sex provision in the uh, Cyber Crime Prevention Act addresses cyber pornography. Okay, um, but then uh, Justice uh, Peralta, who's an expert in, um, in criminal law, said, now wait, now hold on, there's nothing in the law that states that the cyber sex provision, section 1C1, only addresses cyber pornography. Okay. My personal opinion is that um, people, uh, the authorities are confused when they see cyber sex, the word, because um, it's all over the news. Cyber sex then is raided, cyber sex then. Okay. What's bad there is the then. Okay. A sex then is illegal. Yeah. Very much so in the same way that a drug then is illegal. And during the time when the uh, revised penal code was written, opium dens were illegal. Okay? So instead of focusing on the word den, they focus on the word cyber sex. Yeah. As if, well, r right now, cyber sex is a crime. Okay? Cyber sex is not a crime the same way as sex itself, as long as it's consensual and nobody gets hurt mm. and they are of age. Mm. That means that that sex is not illegal. Hence, cyber sex or sex using um, information communication technologies should not be illegal because you're not harming anyone, you're not fooling anyone, and you're already adults. It's only yeah. wrong when it goes into um, child pornography yeah. or when it goes to um, revenge porn. So. Um, that's that's the reason why um, PIFA is uh, strongly against uh, the cyber sex provision. Yes. Unfortunately, there were only two um, justices that uh, wrote dissenting opinions on that. And these are Justices Scarpio and Justice Lionel. So um, we're using their arguments uh, in the motion for reconsideration. The motion for and we're just going to um, follow their lead. So in short, cyber sex as a whole is being criminalized. Yes. When it should only be a certain small subset, you yes. know, that's you know, it, subcategory. Yes, so um again, um the emphasis there is not the sex. Mm. Okay. The emphasis there is the trafficking, the pornography, the prostitution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? These are evils. Sex by itself is not evil. It's a form of expression. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're going to um, crack down on uh, pornography or on prostitution, you don't crack down on sex. So you don't crack down on cyber sex. Okay, let's go back to the e-libel provision again. Mm -hmm. One of the things that made it really bad before was the one level, one degree higher. Like yes. The punishment would mm -hmm. be like, what, over a decade. Like yeah. you could be put in prison. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's harsher for, for the online crime than mm -hmm. on the like uh, in person yeah. in, you know is this mm. still in the the current um it's still there um as regards the uh racing to um one degree higher yeah um but the weird thing is uh they related it to um this other provision that says that uh all other laws are subsumed in the cybercrime law and if you use ICT information and communication technologies you raise it to one level higher. Yeah. Now, I was looking for this um, in the decisions and in the uh, concurring dissenting opinions. During the oral arguments, uh, Justice Carpio pointed out that uh, the provisions on cyber libel or on uh, any type of crime, cyber crime, does not distinguish between um, a computer that's connected to the internet mm. and one that's standalone, not mm. connected to the internet. Therefore, um, if you use a word processor to write something, even though you don't post it online, that's still a crime of cyber libel. Yeah. So, 
um, in the words of uh, Justice Carpio, who in this day and age does not use a word processor? So by implication, almost all types of libel Become is cyber libel. Cyber libel. <laughs> so it's... Uh, so it gets the maximum or the one degree higher penalty. Yes, um, the one degree higher. Yeah. So um, well, when when you uh, you, you play through through a range. Yeah. Okay? So um, it's not automatically maximum, but automatic yeah. automatically you're one degree higher. That that's yeah. the problem. And there's also one thing that was pointed out by Justice Peralta again. He said um, it, it was during the time that uh, he was uh, questioning uh, Congressman Neri Colmenares, who hmm. was there uh, at the uh, oral arguments. He told the congressman, Congressman, you should tell your, um, uh, your colleagues at the, at the House that they might not be able to run hmm. because if uh, you're uh, slapped with... Uh, with a case like, like, that's yeah. uh, 10 years and higher, um, the Omnibus Election Code won't allow you to run. So I'm not sure why they left that out in the main opinion and in, in all the uh, minority opinions. But I'm thinking that perhaps they really want to see what would happen come election, uh, election time. Because by then, only angels will be able to run. Because everybody would be filing each other with uh, libel cases. Yeah, and they still did not change anything regarding the decriminalization of libel, which, you know, it has been called unconstitutional, like libel being a, a criminal case instead of a yes. civil case. Um, Justice Leonan was the one that, uh, for the total decriminalization. Yeah. Um, Justice Carpio said that he just wanted um, uh, libel not to have that... Uh, that uh, high level of um, proving the, what do you call that? Malice. Yes, the actual malice. Yeah. Okay, so, 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 so what happened there is that um, he said, okay, keep it there. Just make sure that if you're a public official, a public figure, you, you don't have to follow the actual malice rule. And he was joined in by Justices Brion and Mendoza. So three were for the uh, diluting of the uh, libel provision, and Justice Leonian was for the total scrapping of the uh, provisions in libel and cyber libel. So, so far, what I'm getting is that this case is far from a good and constitutional yes. case, as far as democracy-loving people are concerned. It, it's improved a lot, like compared to what it was before, but it still doesn't cut cut it when you care about our freedoms. And there's, of course, a lot of uh, nuances, a lot of things to learn, which is why it's good that you're writing this series for gmanewsonline.com. The, the first one is already out, yes. and the others will be out Hopefully several... By tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, look forward to that. Um, keep yourselves aware. Join uh, PIFA at pifa.ph. Um, this fight is not over. It's, it's very disappointing that a lot of people think that we've already won because of the TRO that's since been lifted because the decision has came. It is constitutional Actually, according to the Supreme Court. Yeah, we're not yet sure about the uh, lifting because I, 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 yeah. I, was, I was looking for that. But, but, but don't tell them that. Don't tell them that the uh, TRO, I think they forgot to say that it's lifted. So <laughs> if if they, didn't, they, they didn't say it, it's not yet lifted. Okay, so you heard that here from us. Um, thank you for watching. And again, pifa.ph and... Um, Check out his series on uh, the cybercrime law and see you next time.